In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at some big time storms, including the remnants of Debbie that are still really wrecking havoc across the northeastern states as well as the southeastern regions of Canada. We do have other storms happening around the nation as well as another big time east coast tropical threat. Couldn't even specifically call it an east coast threat. I'd say that even the Gulf states should be on pretty high alert as these storms have a tendency to do whatever they want. So we really can't pin it down to any given location just yet, but it does look like it could be a pretty major system. On top of all of these things, we're also going to be talking about that big time cold air that is on the way and really ongoing already uh, for a lot of areas. This is going to bring a big fall time like temperature swing uh, that is going to give us a sneak peek as to what we can have it to, to expect over the coming weeks. Very, very exciting stuff. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the upcoming pattern. By the time we are looking at this evening, we see that Debbie is still, like I said, kind of bringing some impacts here across some of the mid-Atlantic and northeast here. States like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, New England in general here seeing a lot of impacts. But Canada, I would say overnight, is really getting the worst of it here across some of these eastern provinces. Uh, really, really heavy rainfall there as this low pressure system is still pretty strong. What's interesting is that Debbie has kind of taken on a characteristic of what we typically see from our uh, low pressure systems here, not the tropical ones, but typically what we see from our land low pressure systems, and that's that it has a cold front underneath swinging, and this is allowing for the cold air to move in behind Debbie. Very interesting, and we have cooler air overall taking over this entire area by the time we're moving into tomorrow uh, and that's cooler compared to normal of course you know florida isn't going to be cool per se i, I wouldn't call it cool uh, but it's definitely going to be a cool down from what they've been seeing overall activity out west is kind of up i would say uh, at this point compared to what things have been very interesting saturday afternoon uh august 10th here already a third of the way through august our final summertime month of 2024 i mean can you believe that we're moving into fall so so rapidly we do have thunderstorms and showers happening across the rockies and across the plains here by this point as well something to watch for great lakes into the northeast here we're seeing some storms and showers southeast as well we're seeing florida georgia south carolina north carolina dealing with a lot of thunderstorms and showers that really really need to be watched uh, Sunday here on August 11th, what we're seeing is showers and thunderstorms still ongoing for those Rockies and Plains states. Definitely an area that I'm going to be really, really uh, keying in on. We do see that the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and even in the interior northeast, uh, as well as those southeastern provinces, once again, are seeing some showers and thunderstorms around for these areas. And same story for the deeper southeast areas where really this is typical this time of year. As I've mentioned earlier, you know, over the coming month, two months, three months, we are going to see this slow down. So definitely, uh, you know, enjoy it while it lasts if you do enjoy thunderstorm activity as these areas uh, are kind of just past their peak at this point. Uh, Monday on August 12th now, what we're seeing is really a lot more organization around the nation. Uh, we're seeing the Rockies, Plains. Uh, Great Lakes here, Northeast, Southeast, Gulf states here. Really, uh, there's just a couple of uh, patches in between where we're not really seeing too much activity. But for the most part, there is a lot of activity here in the East overall. Tuesday on August 13th, what we're seeing here is the same story. Really, you can't pinpoint a specific area where we're seeing thunderstorms and showers as it's almost scattered about the entire uh, two-thirds or, or I would say three-fourths of the Eastern states here. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, let's take a look here at Wednesday, the 14th, and things do slow down a little bit. I can kind of pinpoint that it is the Rockies, Northern Plains, Midwest area seeing the heart of this activity. You still can't rule out any coastal activity along the East or uh, Gulf states there as there is still just a lot of summertime humidity and heat around bringing thunderstorm chances inherently, really. Uh, and, and here's that tropical threat that we've been tracking for a couple of days. Wednesday, we're going to see it already in kind of the Caribbean next Wednesday. This is going to, in general, try to head in this direction. It could continue on further east or westward as we kind of saw Debbie do. It could go a little bit further out to see than what models are showing. It could impact the southeast. It could impact the mid-Atlantic. It could impact areas in the northeast or in Canada. There is so many possibilities. It's impossible to rule out anything. So we really want to treat this as anything's possible type scenario. Uh, Thursday, the 15th here, we see that it is to the east of the Bahamas as this model has had a tendency to show 
Friday, same story. It's a very, very strong storm, though, uh, rapidly intensifying there out to the east of the Bahamas. We do see the heart of the thunderstorms will be over the southeastern corner of the nation, but a lot of the Midwest and Ohio Valley are in there as well for a lot of that thunderstorm activity by Friday the 16th. Saturday the 17th, we see this tropical low well into the 970s at least, so likely a hurricane here off the east coast. Again, very far offshore on this model. Others, not so much. We see over the east, there is a lot of thunderstorm activity here as well. This setup seems a little bit similar to Debbie, unfortunately, because Debbie was an extremely impactful and catastrophic storm in many ways, including tornadoes, flooding. Uh, just wouldn't want to have that again, of course. But the storminess setting up in the east, as well as just the strong, you know, tropical low off the east coast, is really, really reminiscent, in my opinion, of Debbie. That's, that's a lot of what we saw with Debbie. Uh, and what ended up happening with Debbie is model run after model run, we saw it trend further west until it was expected uh, to wrap around into the west coast of Florida there. So that storm really trended far west from what this model originally called it to do. So definitely uh, a lot is possible here. Sunday the 18th, I guess something a little concerning here is that it doesn't curve off the coast like you'd want it to. It kind of wants to keep heading northward, which would put the northeast and mid-Atlantic a little bit more in the crosshairs. I talked about it yesterday, but low pressure is attracted to low pressure, and there's clearly some low pressure here along the east. You would expect this storm to want to interact with this as opposed to head towards higher pressure, so that is something to think about Sunday and then into uh, Monday the 19th here. I mean, that is really too close for comfort here. A strong tropical low there just offshore of the northeast and mid-Atlantic. Uh, again, could change a lot, but that is just not a, not a good look, and uh, we do have warmth in the west, trough in the east here overall. Uh, which also really doesn't help matters at all either. So lower pressure, colder temperatures would attract a tropical low like that closer to the coast likely, in my opinion. Now, the precipitation anomalies, as we just take a look at it, we do see things really receding in the east because Debbie is all but said and done. Uh, we do see that there is drier areas overall in here. This is the remnants of Debbie, but I do expect these areas to turn brown as well as we should be seeing just overall a drier pattern in the east here for a little bit. Mostly wet here across the Rockies and the Plains. That's going to be the main area to watch for that type of activity. Here is your temperature anomalies. I want to really roll through this with you guys. And we can see this Arctic blast located right here over the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest area. Uh, definitely looking to head eastward. Uh, something to watch for, for sure. Uh, there is warmer temperatures in place right now, but that should come to an end very shortly. One of the driving factors here is going to be this positive PNA out west, and that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. Really, all you need to know is that means warmer temperatures in the west. When there's warmer temperatures in the west, it forces a lot of this cold to move eastward, and that is exactly what we're seeing happening here. So that is the driving force behind this pattern that we're seeing unfold. And we see that cold air really, really take over here. Here's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, keep in mind, this is an ensemble model, so even though it's showing light blues, it's just kind of a lack of specific location confidence. There should be colder air than this available, uh, but this is mid to late week already, so a while from now. We do see cooling out west, so again, a negative PNA look. This should reel everything back in over time, uh, so we could be watching for that in the long range. And Obviously, we do see some warm in the east. For some areas, there is still some cold hanging on, even by August 19th, 10 days from now. But there is cold in the west as well, which should, uh, this type of a setup should keep these warmer temperatures over the central states like we see here. As we keep going, it doesn't really change too much. That's the same thing we're seeing by August 24th. But again, this is an ensemble model, something to pay attention to. But there is going to obviously be some inaccuracies due to it being an ensemble model. Here is your CFS long range temperature anomaly model. We're even gonna look as far as September like we did yesterday. And this model actually looks a whole lot colder than it did prior uh, to uh, yesterday. I mean, we're, we're seeing uh, a lot of cold air here. Here's the 22nd through the 27th, cold in the east. We do get a brief warm up there, it looks like towards the end of August into the beginning of September. But look at this, we cool right back down for September for a lot of the east. Uh, we do see plenty of cold air to work with in the east, even by late September, which would be quite cool, but also for the west. So negative PNA combined with this cold in the east. You might wonder what that usually causes, and it's exactly this. Warm-ups in the central states, it's kind of forced to go between these two cold air masses, 
It can't really mix with it. So this is the setup that you end up getting. And that's exactly what we see here. So I have to say this model does seem to have a pretty good handle on the medium to long range pattern. And we shall see if it holds true, if it holds accurate or not. Of course, in the long range, it is a little bit of a toss up, but we will continue to track this with you guys. Uh, so be sure to subscribe, by the way, of course, like always. Uh, we do see here in the tropical Atlantic, we have the remnants of Debbie. Uh, but also we have a 60% chance of tropical formation there uh, over the next seven days in our MDR, which is short for main development region there between Africa and the Caribbean. We see that code orange 60% chance better than a coin toss there that we see this develop into a system uh, as it approaches that kind of eastern Caribbean area. Now, keep in mind, this is a little bit further south than what we see the European model showing. So uh, definitely this would put the Gulf and the East Coast a lot more of a risk. And, and a lot more threat so something to pay attention to um definitely the national hurricane center has done a great job uh, they do a great job deciphering these models as well as you know with debbie we saw the gfs model calling for a gulf strike the european model calling for an east coast strike and they kept both options on the table um, until it was evident that the gfs model was correct uh, so definitely uh, they do a great job of deciphering those models and of course we love to show these graphics as they are the professionals also, you know, you can feel free to check out the National Hurricane Center website. I highly recommend everybody familiarize themselves actually with this website as it's extremely useful if you do live in areas that do see tropical impacts. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.